So in a sec, Roland, we're going to play um, the. It's tough to watch, but the video of Nicole, who you mm. met on the weekend, um, being arrested. Uh, we're going to discuss it a bit, and then we're going to see your interview, um, where, um, where where you actually sat down with her. So, Maria, let's play the tape. An exemption. That's all right. We'll That's take fine. your details. You don't have to take my details. I don't. Well, I'm not. Taking your details. I'm not obliged to give you my details. I know my rights. I know oh, my I'm rights. Sure, you do. Yes. So you can ask away. You are not getting my details, and I do not need to give you my mask exemption. I don't even need to speak to you. Come with me. Excuse me. That's come my. Me. That's my personal bag. Yep, come with me. Excuse me. You can't do this. Come with me. I don't need to. Excuse me. That is my bag. So now I have you, your now, attention. Now you so have now my have bag. You have Can my you bag. Some no, I can't. I'm not giving you an end of it. That is my bag. Give Keep me my filming. fucking bag. Give me my bag. Keep filming. Give me. You are antagonizing me now. Give me my bag. You are antagonizing me. I have anxiety and asthma now. Give me my bag. So, give me my bag. So to save your you anxiety. You are antagonizing people. Save your anxiety. Well, give me my give bag. Me I don't need to. I do you know this? Why are you doing this? Please. You don't need to do this. Everybody else in this train That's is right. doing the right thing. Because they have any do I they need an exemption? Where's I have your one. exemption. I don't have to show you it is a personal thing between my doctor and me. I have an exam I'm not trying to start any give argument. The sergeant, I'm trying. Are. I don't, need to, I don't need to give you my name. You know this. I know you can see it in my eyes. You, you, you know I'll be on the train. With, with I'm going to take your bag outside the railway station. So keep filming. Do you feel like a really big man? Do you feel like a big man? You've just taken a, a young girl's bag off her because she won't present a mask exemption to you or details. You are doing the wrong thing. Crimes against humanity is so big right now. My children... <laughs> You don't know what you're getting yourself into, do you? You really don't. You've got no idea what is happening in the world. I'm sure you're, you're just you're enforcing. I'm enforcing sure you're this. Me. I'm not going to tell you. You have to do your own. Way. You have to wake yourselves up. No one else is going to do it for you. It's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts? Hmm. Look, um, when I try to look at uh, a situation, I obviously want to know both sides of the story. I can never go to a uh, magistrate or a judge and prosecute a, a matter only having one side. Having said that, though, that video sort of tells a pretty clear story. Um, I'm not here to defend or to criticise that officer because I haven't spoken to him. I don't know him. Sometimes police have an off day um depends sometimes on the interaction they had five minutes before that or for the last 10 years prior to that influences the officer but everyone has a right to expect that an officer is going to uphold their rights and freedoms that's part of our um that's part of our core duties under our um under our code of ethics so yeah it's difficult to watch i i don't know what was going through that officer's mind and why he took that course of action I can certainly understand uh, Nick's feelings and I commend her for knowing her rights and for standing up for herself. I um I don't play the video to be like, look at this, answer for it or anything. Roland's here to have a discussion and um, talk about how we can move forward in a relationship with the people. And that begins with a discussion, as I said. And um, it's important to, ha to have this. And at least Roland took the step to seek out this per this individual Nicole, to as as an olive branch, and uh, right now we're going to play that video, and I think it's uh it's quite beautiful actually. Oh, hi, Roland. Hey. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much for agreeing to come and have a chat today. Yeah, good. It's a Let's beautiful day. Down. Save his arm from the cops. Yeah, yeah, big big move. Um, certainly not how I expected to end my career. Um, dropping the keys under the door and knowing I'll probably never go back, but um, it is what it is. Uh, I couldn't really speak publicly, not that I've ever wanted to speak publicly, mm. 
but there's things that need to be said and um, messages that need to be given to my colleagues, and not only here in Australia, but globally. Look, thanks so much for coming over chat. I just want to touch base with you. Um, lots of people have seen that video. Um, from my perspective, um, I did three decades of uniform policing. Um, I can't really understand exactly what I'm looking at there from the officer's mindset, but tell me, before that incident, what was your perception of the New South Wales Police? Look, I value our cops. Yep. My, I have two uncles that are ex-police officers who I've admired my whole life and looked up to and thought they were my heroes. Right. Um, and, you know, we need our cops. We need them to support us in our communities and they're a part of our communities too. Mm. You know, the laws they enforce upon us are their laws, the laws that they're forcing upon themselves and each other and we've got to make changes. Um, but yeah, I, I've got the most respect in the world for our police, but um, it's definitely, it's changing just because I'm unsure who's upholding our rights anymore. Yeah, right. Things obviously take a bit of a downturn. Mm. You lodging a complaint against these officers? Yeah, look, I didn't really lodge a complaint. I more or less wanted to find out in what way that cop was reprimanded. Was he, was he then educated about what our rights are mm -hmm. to, if he was to be put in one of those situations again? Right. I wanted to find out what, what was going to, what was the course of action after that. Did you find it? No. So when I was when I spoke to um, the inspector, uh, he basically told me that the police was just doing his job, and he couldn't even tell me that I was within my rights. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't have the heart to go through with a um, with a formal complaint. I just I, this man would have had a family to feed, and just I don't know. Would it have been worth? my energy to even do something like that. It takes that a lot of energy, of doesn't it, people, to, yeah. to do that sort of thing, take that course of action. Um, look, I can tell you that as a police officer, you, you can develop a mindset that um, people need to comply with the directions you're given. Um, you can ask them, um, you can tell them, and then you can make them comply. Sometimes, um, there's a lot of grey in what cops do, you know. You, you have an end goal in mind, which is compliance, but the, the pathway to, uh, to reach compliance can be a murky one at mm. times. Um, I don't justify what I saw on that video, but your video was fairly, um, fairly telling. Um, and so look, I wanted to say to you that I'm sorry for what you went through. And I wanted to make sure that um, that at least you had an ongoing perception and understanding that there are still very many dedicated and decent cops out there. Knowing your rights is very important, um, but equally police officers have to respect those rights. Yeah, and I think that was the scariest part of it for me is realising that there are cops out there that, that don't know. Like, yeah. There are cops out there that don't know my rights. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Either they don't know or um, just through the interaction they are losing their way yeah. and they are taking a path that is not completely appropriate. Mm. Um, but look, I, I, I love the aspect that you bring to this that you are not out for vengeance. You know, because as you say, we need police in our community to be that pillar in society that actually upholds rights and freedoms. Mm. Um, if, if we have officers that are solid in their knowledge and understanding of what they should enforce, what they shouldn't, and the manner in which they should do it, how much force is appropriate, um, then society can have confidence in their officers. Um, I don't want it to be the case where someone like yourself sees a police vehicle or you're on the train, you see the police get on the train and all of a sudden your heart sinks. Yeah. 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 And I guess like, you know, when we're in those when we, we're not used to being in police altercations or being confronted by police um, for practicing our basic human rights, such as breathing fresh air, mm. um, and then not being able to defend our rights, that puts people in a really difficult situation, especially when they've got serious, you know, 
ailments. Mm. Um, and not, not being given that voice is quite, it's scary. So there is, you know, an air of intimidation now like poli with the police. Yeah. But when you've got just, you know, it's, it's, and it's definitely not all cops, um, just from what we, most people have seen come out of Victoria mainly. Um, and then now some incidences in New South Wales, you know, people are quite frightened mm. because they've, they've been, you know, that's, they've been told that's how you get treated if you step out of line. Yeah. And just, They're more frightened of the cops than they are of any virus, yeah. I think. Yeah. The repercussions of non-compliance yeah. with what I believe are draconian public health orders that, um, you know, are, are attacking our basic human rights and freedoms mm. to such an extent um, that it's unparalleled. Mm. Yeah. From what I've seen, the vast majority of people are mums and dads and tradies and um, just basic members of the community just trying to um, find their way to protect their basic right to survive. And so, um, for, for my colleagues, um, I would be saying to them, guys and girls, um, these are not the people we need to be putting on the ground. These are our neighbours. And so, um, with that message and with them understanding the impact that their interactions can have on just a law-abiding member of the community, and if we can get that message out to my former colleagues and not only New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, every Australian police officer and then other nations around the world. Police officers in every country and military, you did not join to become tools of oppression and that's what they need to understand and that's why your story is so important because law abiding um, put through a situation that I regret you went through but you're a strong person, you're a positive person and now you're turning it around, you're making lemonade out of lemons, as they say. Couldn't ask for more from you. But thanks so much for, um, for having a chat with me. Yeah, no, thank you as well. Yeah. And thanks for um, stepping out and standing up. Because without you guys, what hope, like, what hope do we have? Like, some of us have smaller voices, but you guys, mm. you guys, could be a serious tool for change. Absolutely, we can. And, you know, how much longer? How much, where do we draw the line? The line's already been crossed multiple times. It has. We need, we need our police officers so to rise up. We're, they are a part of our communities. We're mm. together. Yep. There's no two ways about it. That's just the way it is. So the sooner that people start to realize that this is a really crucial time in human history mm. and Now's the time. Nick, awesome to meet you. I was, I was really keen to have this chat and, um, and, and it's so good to meet positive people. Yeah. You know, we can turn things around, but where we put our focus and our energy is the direction that we're going to head. Yeah, and, absolutely. And if, and if we dwell in fear, it shuts us down. Yeah. And I can see you're not there. Don't feed awesome. the fear monster. Absolutely not. <laughs> good stuff. Well, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Good to a hug's, meet you. A hug's on the cards there. Good on you. <laughs> No, but see that that is leadership. Scott Morrison notes, Roland and Nicole, thank you so much for demonstrating that a productive conversation can happen. Like it was so refreshing. I, oh, guys, let us know what you think in the and give this a share. I watched that this afternoon. I was just like, wow, look more more of that, please. That was. How did you leave following that, Roland? Because that was amazing. Sorry, mate, I just dropped it out there. Go again. I was just saying, I was absolutely flabbergasted when I saw that interview. I thought it was an amazing. It's such a great step to see people go in that direction. What were your thoughts from leaving that meeting? Oh, look, I was just so impressed with um, Nick's heart because, you know, she doesn't bear any animosity. Um, she just wants to see that relationship between police and the community repaired. And really that's, uh, that's what I'm about. And that's what uh, we're about with um, even international efforts through policeforfreedom.org, uh, which will become more and more prevalent, hopefully in uh, interactions with, with police. But um, walking away from Nick, 
uh, yeah, I've found a new friend in her, and uh, she's just a genuine, good-hearted person. Yeah. The, the comments section is flooding with tears right now. Um, people, people want to see that. People want to see the country come together. Um, we, we all understand a, a certain level of empathy and what others are going through, and, mm. and that, that's, that's, that's what's meant to be done. That's all we wanted. You know, I think a lot of the um, – you know, take a different example. I think a lot of people would be more understanding of some of the – chief health officer's directions and maybe even more compliant if they actually sat down and explained them, you know, in a long form interview, if I had Dr. Kerry chant here, like the, the links, I think it would actually mitigate a lot of the things that she's doing. So she could actually hear some genuine questions, not from the mainstream media, but also it would allow people to actually say, oh, okay, that's why you're doing this. That's why you're doing that. I don't get me wrong. I think a lot of the stuff Dr. Kerry chant has been doing this pandemic has been terrible all comes back to transparency and honesty and an intellectually mm. honest discussion. We're not getting that. And Roland and Nicole, I've said it five times already. Thank you for so – if you're listening to this conversation, you don't understand how difficult it is, one, to get a police officer on, show his face, say his name, and two, get a citizen who was abused, who's already been through the ringer, been, you know – her face has gone around already and she's gone viral with this particularly the embarrassing clip. A lot of people wouldn't want to be on camera again to get them to sit down together, have a civil discussion. It, it's, it's a, it's like finding a needle in the haystack. Full credit to you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. Like, you know, it's one thing for me to rant and rave, but what the hell do I know? You guys have been through it. Thank you so much for speaking up. I just, I, I, I feel like you guys said it all. And I just, on behalf of everyone in the comments, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. No, well, look, mate, thanks for giving us the platform. And, um, you know, I, I just want to encourage my colleagues, my former colleagues, but once a cop, always a cop, we're all part of that family. Remember the reasons you joined, okay? We joined to be a pillar of society. We, we joined for the purposes of making our communities safer, all right? Be, be mindful of where you apply pressure and where you use force because uh, that's not what we're about when it's law-abiding, peaceful mums and dads just struggling for their basic survival. Let's let's get back on track. Absolutely. Um, there's, no, there's no version of these events, Roland, where you can return back to your, your job, is there? <laughs> Don't know that I want it, mate. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> enjoying sleeping in the dark. <laughs> 31 years of shift work um yeah and 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 wearing all that equipment um it's probably take a couple of years for the bruises to subside but right. uh we'll see we don't know what we don't know we don't know what's around the next corner well i must when i was when i was in school my mum say to me joel you know chances are by the time you get out and you get into the workforce the job you're going to do hasn't even been invented yet well, Roland, when we do have these investigations and when we do come out with um, some recommendations from a royal commission, particularly one that's looking into police, I hope that we can create a job where you, you can, we can utilise your 31 years of experience so that we can reform the police, just as all the other former officers have come out. Um, and it has nothing to do with a monetary benefit. It has to do with it improving our country and making Australia great again and increasing the strengthening that bond as a society. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say? The only other thing I'd say is to the community itself, and look, I completely understand your, uh, your anger at what you're seeing on the TV, the, um, the violence and the force that's being used. Just be mindful, you, you, you're not seeing the thousands of interactions that police have that are peaceful. Uh, and 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 that are um, upholding people's freedoms. You're only seeing the ones that the mainstream media want to show you. There's a lot of good police out there that are struggling with this. All right, don't lose faith in your police. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roland. I um, I, I'm I'm really grateful for this interview. Um, th this opportunity to to get this out. Um, and that you know you've. I hope other people will also take you up on this and learn from this. And um, just as other interviews we've done uh, inspired people overseas, I hope they also learn this as well. Um, yeah, we've got to come together.
We do indeed. Mm. Thanks very much for having me on, Mike. Nah, it's been it's been my pleasure. I'm looking forward to having you back eventually. <laughs> All right, guys, you've been listening to Turning Point Australia. This is another um, broadcast brought to you by Turning Point, and um, we don't have any sponsors yet um, because we we rely on uh, the individual donations from ordinary Australians. That means we're not beholden to any big donors, and I like it that way. Um, so look, please, if you if you can share this content, get it as far and wide as possible. We need to spread the common sense and peace um, message. And uh, if you're able to donate, these are tough times. Only donate what you are able to. Feed your family first. Take care of everyone first. Um, and with that said, if you're struggling, reach out to Empowerment Tribe. If you go to my Instagram, I've done interviews with them. Empowerment Tribe are really amazing. If you're struggling to put it on the table, go to them. They'll take care of you. They're absolute legends. Those angels are feeding so many families in in new south wales and they're looking to expand it into victoria but guys thank you so much for tuning in um if you if you can share please share if you can donate please donate and um we're in this together in the truest sense of the phrase i'll see you guys later thank you very much